On today's meal prep video, we are going to go back in time to the healthiest place in the world, the Greek island of Crete. We're gonna go back to the 1950s and 1960s when they had the highest longevity rates in the world, the lowest rates of heart disease and cancer and diabetes, where the men lived to be the same age as the women. I'm gonna be cooking a whole week's worth of food, five recipes, starting with one of my favorites, shrimp with feta and tomatoes. This shrimp dish is classic Greek, starting with heating up a quarter cup of the best extra virgin olive oil you can find. Thinly slice some onion rounds, chop some garlic, and cut a red pepper into strips. By the time you are done with that, the oil should be ready for some sizzling veggies. Saute the onion, garlic, and red pepper for about five minutes. Chop some tomatoes into large pieces and then add those to the veggie mixture. Simmer for another 15 minutes and then add the shrimp. Cook the shrimp until no longer pink, five to 10 minutes, and then crumble in the feta. Simple, elegant, and something you can make even if you have very little cooking experience. A couple of things to know about fish and seafood and the Mediterranean diet. Uh, a lot of people think that in the Mediterranean they just eat tons and tons of seafood. They don't really eat that much seafood. But in the Mediterranean, like on the island of Crete, they would eat maybe around four to six ounces of fish and seafood per week. And a lot of that was because they lived way in the mountains and they didn't live down by the sea. So that maybe they didn't eat as much as you would think. Next, I'm going to tell you about the importance of daily greens as we make uh, one of my favorite dishes from Crete, horta with potatoes. Horta is the Greek word for edible greens. In Crete, they would forage for greens in the mountains and eat them often. These greens are packed with many nutrients, including omega-3s, vitamin C, vitamin K, and iron. For this Horta with potatoes recipe, we're using two bunches of Swiss chard and around 10 ounces of spinach. Any green will work, and other favorites include mustard, kale, and dandelion greens. Peel around six small potatoes and cut them into quarters. Next, chop up to 10 cloves of garlic. It's a lot of garlic, so if you're gonna kiss someone that night, make sure they eat some too. Oh, ah, your breath stinks! Slice a lemon in half, and then you are ready to put this delicious dish together. Add one cup of the best extra virgin olive oil you can find to a Dutch oven or thick bottom pot large enough for all the vegetables. We have talked about this before, but the Mediterranean diet is a high fat diet and one of the best diets for your heart and weight. It might take some training for you to start eating a higher fat diet, but I'm pretty sure you will love it in the end. Next, add one cup of water and then the potatoes. Make sure the potatoes are all covered by water and oil. You can add a bit more water if needed. Bring the potatoes to a boil and keep on a low boil until they are close to tender, maybe five to 10 minutes. Then add all the greens and let them boil down. Make sure the potatoes stay in the liquid so they continue to cook. Once the potatoes are tender and the greens are cooked down, salt and pepper to taste. Horta with potatoes. Now in the Mediterranean, on the island of Crete, something they might do is they might just have this for dinner. And I know what you're thinking, where's all the protein? There's actually a little bit of protein in this, but you don't have to have protein at every meal. And in the Mediterranean, they don't always have protein. And so you could add something like a little cheese or you know, you could have this with chicken or fish, but you don't have to. And I would definitely recommend either rice or pasta or uh, maybe bread to sop up all of the delicious olive oil juices afterwards. I mean, bread is probably the, the most traditional thing that's eaten with this. So again, daily greens, one of the things that you find in all of the healthiest places in the world. And next, we're going to make a traditional Greek salad. To show you how easy it is to make an authentic Greek salad, I'm gonna make it for you right here. So we're gonna start with cucumbers, and then red peppers, Traditionally, they would use green peppers, but I like red better. And then, uh, let's do tomatoes next. Traditionally, they might use sliced tomatoes. I'm using cherry tomatoes because 
I like to make a salad that takes about five minutes to make and everything less that I need to slice, the better. Next, we're gonna add Kalamata olives, some uh, red onion, some lemon juice, a good amount of extra virgin olive oil, and then we're gonna add some feta to the top. They usually add a whole piece like that to the top. And then we're gonna put a little oregano, dried oregano on that, and then a little more olive oil to top it all off, and you have yourself a delicious Greek salad. And one of the things to notice about the Greek salad is that there's no lettuce. And you can put lettuce in yours, but traditionally there is no lettuce. This also could be a meal. It has everything you need. It has protein in the cheese, carbohydrates, fats. It's a really delicious meal, especially again, if you have it with a little bit of bread, but you don't really need it. Um, I've had this for dinner and even my four-year-old loves this dish. A definite mainstay of the Mediterranean diet and the diet of Crete, Greek salad. Next, we're gonna make a lentil soup with olive oil and orange. In Crete, in the 1950s and 1960s, when they were the healthiest people, beans were the main source of protein. Beef and chicken were eaten rarely, maybe once per week, while beans were eaten multiple times per week. I love lentil dishes because you don't have to soak the beans ahead of time and you can have a finished soup in under an hour. After washing a pound of lentils and checking for stones, add the beans to a large pot with six cups of water. Bring to a boil and cook for about 15 minutes. While the lentils are cooking, grate a carrot and then grate an onion or two depending on their size, mince a few cloves of garlic, and then cut some slices from an orange. In Crete, they would use dried orange slices, but I like to just use fresh. Once the lentils have been cooking for about 15 minutes, add one cup of the best extra virgin olive oil you can find, two slices of orange, one bay leaf, the vegetables, and two tablespoons of tomato paste. Add a dash of salt and a dash of pepper and continue on a low boil until the lentils are tender and the sauce is thick. Top with a little more orange juice and maybe some Greek yogurt and you have yourself at least one dinner and a couple of lunches for the week. The final dish is a crock pot chicken meal which means you can throw everything in and just sit around in your hammock all day until dinner is ready. What you guys need is hammocks. Start by adding one pound of chicken breast to the slow cooker. This is by far the best way to cook chicken breast as it comes out nice and tender. Next, add pearl onions or a bunch of small peeled onions. Just like the lentils, we are adding a few orange slices. They have lots of orange trees in Crete, so lots of recipes with oranges. Next, add two cups of red wine. The alcohol will all cook off as the stew slowly simmers. Then add one cinnamon stick, two bay leaves, 10 peppercorns, which will give you some nice peppery bites later on, a pinch of allspice, one cup of water, two tablespoons of tomato paste, and then a dash of salt and a dash of pepper. You can salt and pepper to taste once the stew is cooked. You want to make sure the chicken is completely covered, so you might need to add more water for that purpose. Set the crock pot on low for six hours, go sit in your hammock, and wait for dinner to be ready. All right, it's been six hours on low. And one of the great things about this recipe is because like you don't have to cut much at the beginning, especially if you use pearl onions, there's almost nothing to prepare. But then you, you take the, the chicken breast and put it whole in. But when you, after it's cooked for six hours, you can uh, take two forks and just start to pull them apart. And it's gonna come out something like like what a pulled pork, or in this case, pulled chicken would be like. And it's gonna be very tender, and the cinnamon and the red wine uh, and a little bit of allspice is gonna give it a really amazing flavor. Now this is something that you could serve with rice, or you could just have bread with it, just a regular uh, chicken stew. So again, this would be eaten probably on Sunday in the traditional diet of Crete. They would have actually gotten the chicken from their own land. It was a, a chicken that they raised themselves. So it would be grass-fed 
as is most of the meat and chicken uh, from the Mediterranean, from the traditional Mediterranean diet. There you go. That's a, a typical week of what people in Crete would eat. And as you can see, a lot less meat and chicken, a lot more vegetables and beans, and the way that they do it with lots of olive oil and lots of vegetables and nice herbs and spices make it incredibly delicious. Remember, love with abandon, live with purpose, and eat with passion. I'll see you next time.